What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Games review discussion for the Order 1886. I'm Greg Miller, and this is the Pride of Long Island, Colin Moriarty. It's good to be here with you, Greg. It's good to be and here with you. And a tip of the hat to you. I was just in London in 1886, so uh, cheerio. And oh wow, uh, yeah. you know a lot. You, and, uh, you clearly picked up a lot of your yeah, mannerisms yep. from this mm -hmm, year's game mm -hmm, and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, my late, my lady, my liege. <laughs> Colin, yes. we've been waiting for the Order 1886 for a long, 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 yes, long, long yes, time. Yes. It's finally here. We can mm. finally talk about it. What did you think of it? Did you like the game, yes or no? Uh, Yes. All right, good. Is it a ringing endorsement from Colin Moriarty? No. Okay, why not? The game has significant issues, I think. Okay, lay the, it on me. So I think that the Order 1886's aesthetic is pretty great. Like, they, they, they set up the... This this steampunk kind of it's not even really steampunk. I mean, with the exception of zeppelins and stuff, you wouldn't really know that this wasn't the real London 1886. Sure, you know, in 1886. So, um, except for overcast, the uh, yeah, except for the werewolves too. And but by I mean, the terms, way, there's gonna be spoilers here. Not like we're not gonna go crazy and spoil the story, but like we're gonna talk about it. it's a review. So hold on to your butts. In terms of if you were just looking at a panorama or a scene, sure, it looks like uh, mid 1800 or mid 1880s. Uh, Industrial Revolution, sure. uh, England, full of smokestacks and it's cloudy and all that kind of stuff. I think they really nailed the aesthetic. I think the characters look great. I think they sound great. The games got a very cinematic Cloth quality too. Physics are on point. Exactly. I think that virtually everything else in the game is flawed. Some things are flawed very deeply. Other things aren't flawed at all. I think the game's biggest problems are its pacing, which is uh, I think the pacing is atrocious in the atrocious. game. Atrocious and uh, just absolutely terrible. Okay, Te terrible pacing. Let's unpack it as we okay. go. On the bad side, we'll go. I mean, the uh, good things you've already nailed a lot of them that I enjoyed about it. Beautiful game, mm -hmm. runs really well. Uh, I I do enjoy the world, the set pieces. It's one of those where you know when people started leaking out, oh, it's only five hours long, it's only this hour long. Da -da 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 -da. There, it's because it's a linear game. It's like an Uncharted. You mm -hmm. can go through and do stuff. There's a path you need to go on. But the fact that there's a path means that every nook and cranny looks amazing when you get up on yep, it. Really, absolutely. really amazing worlds. Lots of cool Easter eggs. Did you see the Kratos poster? I didn't see the Kratos poster. I picked up the Sackboy doll. Yeah, the Sackboy doll, of course. Um, all that stuff was awesome. But yeah, what you're getting to, the pacing is definitely weird. Uh, there was an interview, of course, up with Dana that we were talking about today on Colin and Greg Live where he says that the reason... The, the game's the way it is is because they wanted everything to not feel like filler. They want everything to matter, everything mm -hmm. to be different. But when you do that, when there isn't something scene to scene, gameplay to gameplay that is the same, it gets really out of sync and weird. Yeah, I think that, the, and that's the big thing that I walked away with the game first and foremost was the pacing was just completely terrible. Yeah. Like it takes a long time to put a gun in your hand, which is, it is what it is. It reminds me a little bit of Wolfenstein in that respect. It's not, not nearly as bad as that. Um, in that respect. Sure, I know what you mean. But then you get into the second and third chapters and the fourth chapter, things are kind of going swimmingly, you're shooting and starting to learn things, you encounter the half-breeds for the first time. You get to the fifth chapter, which is the airship, then the sixth and seventh chapter, you don't even play. You know what I mean? There's like, chapters there's no that are just cutscenes. There's no playing. Like, oh, like the, the beginning of the sixth chapter, when the airship crashes, you're just walking through the flames, then it's a cutscene. Then the entire seventh chapter is just a cutscene. Yeah. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't. But then I play chapters that I felt like lasted like an hour. Yeah. 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 And you I'm have no like, idea how long this is going to be. And I'm like, why happen. is it separated? I'm not even sure why there are chapters at all. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I don't like. you the game begins in mid October and it ends towards the end of 1886. So it's not even like there's a huge gap of time. I mean, I feel like Uncharted takes a place along a similar amount of time, for instance. And you don't need to necessarily approach it in this very book like yeah um kind of approach where it's like the chapters don't really sink and add up i just felt disappointed with the the pacing of the game and it does that, and that doesn't even go in, into the parts of the game that were just not fun like the stealth parts the stealth and is so fucking annoying mm -hmm. last night i finished the game i picked up it's a what chapter 11 12 somewhere in when there, you're in the courtyard where all of a sudden they're like all right now there's this giant stealth because before like there's a trophy for you know taking down whatever seven or mm -hmm. 11 enemies via stealth and i was like okay cool and when they all started popping i was like i don't think i've done any stealth let alone another and then you get to this one thing where it's a hey, go through this one courtyard get the find the door go get the key go through another courtyard do it all and it's so fucking annoying because it's like the gameplay i think i thought the mechanics were shooting and the weapons they were all cool i thought i was good with that i was i was happy with where that was going but then the stealth mechanic all of a sudden is another like okay now you're coming up on a guy and rather than just give me the choice i wanted to strike when not to you have to do this like mini game of like the, tri the triangle b pops on screen and then it starts closing and you have to hit it at the right time and if you go before or after you get you get knifed and you get killed or whatever. So it's just this trial and not even trial and error, just trial over and over and over again of like, all right, fine. And I went through all the way to the courtyard. I get to like, I can see there's like two guys 
left, get capped in the head because one guy saw me. It's like, fuck. Oh, maybe the save point. What? Nope, it's all the way to the beginning. I got to do this again, get all the way through. All right, now I go to the next one. Now they're like, it's just like, come on, this isn't fun. Yeah, there, there's just certain parts of the game that are like that. And I think, you know, in terms of the third person shooting of the order, I think that it's fine. I don't think it's special. I think Gears of War yeah. does it better. Uh, I think Vanquish does it better. Um, I think that, you know, it, 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 it's, it's functional, but I don't feel like, I feel like, Unlike Uncharted, where there's set pieces and it, it seems like there's some some sort of linear development that brings you to these things and sure. why you're fighting sure. and like how you're getting there, even if it's like kind of comical how many people you're killing, it feels like there is an intent to how everything's set up. And I felt like within the order there isn't. Like suddenly you're just fighting over and over, just endless waves of people on these on these like on these sets, and then you just go a half an hour without fighting anyone. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't understand quite why this is set up like this. They had cool weapons, but then like, and again, this this speaks. Uh, it was interesting to have this story you read today on Connor Live because it it gave me an insight to what was happening. Because last night, like, you get this gun that like shoots gas around people and then you ignite the gas and I was like what a fucking cool weapon mm -hmm. that's awesome and that'll get me my incinerate trophy mm -hmm. and then sure enough the next scene like somebody else hands me a different gun and I go on and then I never get back to that gun it's like well what, the, what was the point of giving me that gun for like two seconds like you know what I mean yeah and I felt like the weapon diversity wasn't as quite as as great as maybe we suggest I mean there are different kinds of pistols yeah you have like a magnum and yep. kind of something that looks kind of like a luger even though it isn't and stuff like that then you have like your bolt action kind of like m1 garand like kind of rifles yeah. then you have yeah, your machine gun, machine gun, gun and pack. like the lightning rifle some of these weapons seem just taken out of resistance frankly mm. the, yeah the one that shoots the air and stuff like that i don't know i i, I don't want to i don't want to focus only on the negative in the sense no, that no, I, no. I think the game's actually good i just think it's not this PlayStation 4 savior exclusive. I think that it's like, a, I think it is a deeply flawed game. That said, I was intrigued by it. I kept playing it. And yeah. You don't have to twist my arm to keep playing it. It was certainly not bad by any stretch of the imagination. I just don't think it's anywhere remotely in the echelon of greatness. And um, I think that, that, you know, I think, you know, we should come out and say that in terms of the length of the game, it took me about eight hours to beat the game. Okay. And you were I, being real thorough. I was being very thorough looking for all my stuff or whatever. Uh, in my mind, when I was reading the five hour things, I wanted to say some people were even saying like three and four. I was like, it's fucking impossible. You know what I mean? Like to get through the game in five hours, you have to basically like r play it on easy and run. You know what I mean? Like through the game, don't explore anything. Don't look yeah. at anything. Just as if you're trying to prove a point, basically, like you're trying to um, just speed run the game. Or I wasn't as thorough as you, and I say it took me like seven, little right around seven, like good or, give or take. I was fine with that, and I'm content with that. I think that a, a good or great six or seven or eight hour game is fine. I understand why people are going to have problems with the value of uh, the perceived value of this game because there is no replay value in the game at all. Yeah, and well, that was the there's no I, multiplayer. So uh, how do you unlock armory? Yeah, I don't know what the hell that is either. That's I a assume good point. when I was playing through and on the options, armory is locked out. I was like, oh, I'm going to beat the game and then reload checkpoints and get to use whatever gun I want to use. That's a great and point. I, I jumped ahead to where I'm like, oh, there's a boatload of enemies here. I'll go get the, you know, get them with the incinerate gun. And I popped in. I couldn't use it. Yeah, that's a great like, point. I have no idea. About? I have no idea what that is. Uh, but, you know, it, it, I felt like in terms of the accoutrements, accoutrements. Uh, around the game like the little things that like matter yeah. to give a game replay power to keep it in your hand for a little longer none of, none of that's there at all no, in the game not at all like the the game is poorly designed from a collectible standpoint it doesn't even tell you what collectibles you're missing and where they are yeah, with annoying. the exception of the um, the uh, phonograph uh, cylinders whatever like you don't even know what you have and what you caught so if you if you miss something too bad you have no idea what the fuck it is you have right. no idea where it is and you're gonna have to play the whole game again um, which is not really a big deal because it's not very long, but to get everything. So there's just little things like that that keep people coming back for more, like the treasures in, uh, in Uncharted. You might go to a stage five or whatever, chapter five in Uncharted 2, and be like, oh, I, I have nine of ten. I know that there's a treasure here I don't have yet. And at least you know what the fuck you're looking for. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. In this game, little things like that, you know, were, were bothering to, were, were bothersome to me. And the trophy list is bothersome to me. And I know that this is a thing that's that doesn't matter to some people, but it doesn't hey, matter to a lot of people. Us PlayStation fans, it does. It does matter to a lot of people, and this trophy list is just haphazard and lazy and boring. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what the hell they were thinking with something like this. You know, like, just spits out golds and silvers. If no one, if people aren't consistent in the way that they treat their trophies and how hard they are to get or whatever, which they aren't already, then, like, yeah. it, it, it destroys, it, it degrades the whole currency. You know, yeah. like, so there's well, just, I have just, like, little problems with the game. No, but those add up and they make sense because this is what we're talking about again on Colin Greg Live when we couldn't spoil the embargo for you. And you were, I was like, I'm short, yeah, I'm short a bunch of collectibles, including, I assume, audio reels, and I didn't inspect something or whatever. And I thought that it was like, because I, when I pick up, you know, audio reels, it says what it is. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'll just go back. And then you told me off the air that, like, no, you're not going to be able to go back for the, the uh, papers. And you're like, so you're going to have a hard time. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just not going to do it. I'm just not. Why would I fucking do that? I don't want to go back through the game and go, 
room by room and go, oh, no, it wasn't that one. Oh, it wasn't that one. Yeah, oh, like if you miss one. a newspaper or a picture or like a collectible in the sense that like there's just items you pick up and examine. That's another thing that's so weird. Like <laughs> all of these scenes where it's like pick it up and move it around. Like why am I moving this gun around for 15 seconds? Can yeah. we just continue? Like I don't understand what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. But we're talking about the negatives. They're easy to talk about the negatives. I think the positives are there. There are a lot of positives. The character is very compelling. And I think the storyline. Uh, huh? Galahad. Galahad. Yeah, uh, Galahad. I think that he's an interesting character. I think the Order is an interesting group. I think that the allusions to real history with people like... Um, Tesla. Uh, yeah, well, well, yeah, Tesla's a great example. Um, there are... Pre these are real people, you know, that, like, they brought into, like, a, a continuance in terms of the, their, their game's particular history, and I think that's yeah. kind of cool. Um, the voice acting, as I said before, I think is excellent. Amazing. I think yeah. the, the cinematic qualities of the cutscenes are awesome. Yep. The Order... We talk about, like, should games be made into movies, where, like, The Order would be a great movie. Um... You know, because I felt like... If it had an ending. The ending of the game is... I don't like the ending of the game. I like the ending Spoilers. in the sense that they will be a sequel. Like, sure. there will unequivocally be a Order 1887. But I, it know? was like one of those things where you, I'd asked you, you beat it before me. I was like, how many chapters are you? Like, there's 16. I was like, okay, great. And so then I'm like playing through it, and I'm like, man, like, is this chapter going to go on for... Like, and when we got, I got to like 15, 16, I was like, what? how long is this chapter going to be? Because I don't even know what the fuck I'm fighting for right, right. now. You know what I mean? And then it gets that I fight this one guy who wasn't the guy I thought I was going to fight. And it's just like, okay. Like, and it was credits. It was like, all right. I mean, it's video video gamey. But for a, a game that like you're talking about, the positives were the storytelling, the world, the characters. Like I wanted payoff. I wanted the confrontation between him and what's her name? Iggy? Izzy? Izzy is how they pronounce He's in pronounce Izzy. I wanted him and Izzy to have their little face off or whatever. Because she has this like great moment of like I will end this rebellion, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I was like, yeah, this is gonna be a fucking good confrontation. Never get it. The main bad guy we saw never have that. You know, it's just like, huh. Yeah, there's some things that are missing, and I think that yeah, it seems the the ending seemed a little. I don't want to say lazy in the sense that the assumption is that there'll be another one. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't think the story is self-contained enough to be sit by itself, and I'd be surprised if Sony didn't already greenlight the sure, sequel. Sure. So, um. I want to see more about what the story is, but I think the characters are interesting. I agree with you that the story kind of lost meaning and sense the longer it went on. Right. Um, the biggest thing that I think is weird is how the half breeds are kind of inserted into the game and how uninspired and bullshit those fights are with the with the the half breeds. Like, just from a design perspective, disappointing. Yeah. Like, I you you basically fight them a few times. And you just hit X when they come near you, you roll out of the way, they run away, and they run back, well, and then see, they run away, and then they run back. It's like, what the, the fuck is this? Here's the thing about the order from a gameplay perspective. I, I, I like I liked the guns, I like the shooting and stuff, but I found myself breaking it now without trying hard <laughs> to break it. Because, like, again, you're talking about the trophy list. I looked through it before I jumped in, and there's the one, you know, kill 10 lichens or whatever, seven lichens mm -hmm. or whatever. And I'm like, holy shit, that's a low number. So clearly these things are going to be badasses. I'm going to have to think and do different things, and it's going to be fighting them will be a challenge in this thing and the first time you see him in the warehouse where like you drop in and then they come at you like yeah he ran at me and i did the x thing and he ran away but then i was like wait a second and i backed myself into a corner so that i saw the two avenues they could possibly mm -hmm. come when he pop up i turn and i would just machine gun him never hit x machine gun machine gun machine gun and just as they would jump they'd fall dead and then i'd walk over a triangle and then i'd walk back to the corner i did that over and over again just like later on when you were talking about it towards the and the back half of the game towards the end of it when you're running through the catacombs pretty much the tunnels underground and like there's all these fucking dudes coming at you all of a sudden like I did the same thing where I was like fuck if I go out there I'm getting butchered but if I step back here and I just sat there and the enemy AI just meant that they ran to the one choke point they just kept running across the little area to like where two boards were separated I was like pop 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 you know what i mean it was yeah like, and, and then the other there's two like in fights where you have to use the, the elder events. the big elder yeah battles, the elder yeah. ones and including the last fight which is identical to a fight that happens early in the game which is also very disappointing identical in the sense that even like the thing you press triangle to pick up in the middle of the fight is still there like you it's just what this came to what, what this said to me was yeah. and, and i don't know if it's true or not it's just ready at dawn seems so obsessed with the technical fidelity of the game that they did not design a game you know what i mean sure. and like that is you know, the more I talk about it, I said the game's good. Maybe the game's not good. Maybe it's okay. You know what I mean? Like, I liked it. But the more I kind of... I haven't talked to anyone about it, really. I haven't even talked to you about it until we got on camera. Right really. here. The... Kind of funny. It seems like the, everything about the way the game looks, you just look at it. I'm like, this game is running fine. It looks beautiful. The characters are, are compelling. But w the way they rolled the game out showed a deep and undying obsession with the technical sure. aspect of the game, the engine. And to the point where in Gamescom, before PS4 even came out, the first time I saw the game running was not even the game, it was Galahad in these white scenes, and they were showing how objects in the environment interacted with him or whatever, and I was like, yeah. okay, like, that's cool, and like, how he moved and stuff like that, I'm like, it looks great, but when you put that into a game, 
you what you have is a standard third person shooter. Yep. With you know this, it, what they made the Lycan or Halfbreed fights out to be were not what they were to be because they showed that one scene where he's getting chased through the hospital by the Lycan, yep. and it seemed like it was. You asymmetric. Run from these guys. Yeah, like you don't want to fight them. Like it's asymmetric, yeah. and they kind of let that go. I mean, I brought that up on my piece. No one like when I was at IGN, and no one really said contrary to me. So I was surprised yeah. that it wasn't really quite like that. When and we got into fights with them, I was like, oh, I thought I thought I'd be running from these guys again, kill seven of them, ten of them, whatever it was. I'm like, oh, then the I'm going to be afraid of these guys. It's going to be a challenge to fight them. And then yeah, you get into these boss fights with them where you're pacing around, and like first off, like. It's it, a game's over. There's way too much shit going on on the screen when it comes to like button prompts mm. and all this other stuff. But you figure out, okay, dodge, and then it's like you know R, well R L two to hard strike and L two, or you know, I'm like, okay, cool, and I would tap them, and nothing would happen. And so what I end up doing is just sitting there and spamming R two, and then whenever the magical window that I have no idea what I was looking for would pop up, he would slash slash at him, and then when the other the stick popped up, I would do that. And like, yeah, once you figure, once I broke that that way, then both boss battles were just like. All right, what are we doing? Let's get yeah, out of this. It reminded me of uh, Lazarevich in Uncharted 2 where it was like, you don't want a game to end like that, but it ends like that, and at least there's a confrontation. Yeah. But you don't expect the final confrontation in the game to be a confrontation you had already. You already know this. And thing, yeah. it, the game should have just ended without it. You know what I mean? Like, at that point. It's like... Just show me a cutscene of them. Yeah, it's just like, awesome just finish battle. the game. Like, why do we even need a lot? You know, so... The, the, what I walk away from this game is Ready at Dawn is talented and they're capable, right? Yeah. They may, they've made great games. This is not one of them. And... The game looks beautiful, and the, the attention to detail that they explained to me when I was at Gamescom was awesome about how they... And you could see it in the environments, like how they would... They went to England, the team, in 2010, and started taking pictures of... And I, I've explained this before, like bricks and locks and doorknobs and all this weird shit. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? Old shit. And they made a world that looks like London, and that's awesome, and they did a really great job with that. But what is in the world? You know what I mean? And and what why what is compelling about it? I have no problem with the short length of the game. It appreciates and, and respects your time, and I think that the, the the length was fine. I think if I had to play for another couple hours, I wouldn't have wanted to play it anymore. You know what I mean? When I was getting frustrated at the stealth part, that was for me when I was like, "Fuck!" If I if we weren't doing this video today, I would stop right here because I'm so frustrated and annoyed. Just annoyed, not even that frustrated. You know, it's like three or four attempts probably to get through it, but it's just like, "Fuck!" This isn't fun. You know what I mean? But you know, the, some some things I did like. I did like the inclusion of those two Indian women. Yep. That I was pretty cool. Just because you don't see. Indian characters very often, and it's cleverly brought into the story by uh, Great Britain and the British Empire's involvement in India at that time. Yeah. So I thought there was like some clever turns uh, in the story that showed a cognizance of the real history of that time, which I thought was kind of neat. Um, and obviously, uh, Ru Weera Sapia and and or Weera Saria, I think it, uh, is his name. I'm I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering it. The guy that runs the studio who's a lover of history, like I am clearly has an astute understanding of the history of the time and wrote a clever tale about it yeah. an incomplete tale though, I, you know because we don't know quite how it ends right and that's that's where i'm torn with it in the game i'm with you i you when you were playing and you were ahead of me you were like hey, i don't know if it's good i don't know if i'd go that high i think it's okay or whatever and i'm right there too you know what i mean if we we don't do we're, we're not gonna do an official review here's our score or whatever sixes would sound right for this game yeah i don't know there, i don't you know even want to i don't even want to play with the scores anymore i think that like, i know i know i know but i'm just saying for the breakdown and the, the reason being just the fact that yeah like like I like uh uh oh, this is a, a main spoiler so I won't do it. What's the the Frenchman's name who was on your team? Lafayette. Yes, Lafayette. He's such a great character. He was cool. I love that I got there before I even understood how the order was working because they explained eventually like oh this is Sir Percival and this is how mm -hmm. all this works. And I just Lafayette. Oh, oh cool. He's he's new. He's young. He's learning and all this stuff. And he's he's you know he, they're mentoring him and da 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 da. And like all their interpersonal relationships was were so good. That was so interesting. But I, that's what I was doing. But like, you know, you were like, you didn't have to twist your arm to play it. Like, when I turned it back on to finish it last night, and I I picked up at chapter eleven, I had a whole moment of just like, wait, what is happening? You know what I mean? Like, I didn't. It, that's when it really dawned on me of like how forgettable the story had been so far. I'm like, I know we went to the warehouse and found all those guys, and now what are we doing? Like, what's the what's yeah, happening now? That's that's the trouble I think is that yeah, and, and it is cool. Like, and again, Lafayette's a good example of another character that they bring in that they respect the history of that character. They yeah. they they make reference to the American Revolution and to the French Revolution, in which he he fought in both of those. And the the revolution happened in you know 1770s, and this is 1886. So he is old, just like the rest of them, but young in comparison. Yeah, yeah. And inexperienced in comparison, which I think is really cool. Um, but I agree with you. Like in terms of you were talking about scoring and all that kind of stuff, I think you know this game to me brings like conjures up something interesting, which is the fact that it, it, it is short and it is story driven, and you should play it once and you'll be done with it. It's one of those games where you should just find some friends that have PS4 that are interested in the game, and everyone puts in twelve twenty dollars, whatever, and just buy the game. Yeah. And just 
pass it around and pass it around and then sell it you know what i mean like i don't i don't see how that would be a problem this is in a game i don't feel i really feel like this is a game you do not have to have in your collection but i do think it is a game that ps4 fans should play because i'm interested to see how it resonates with other people for sure but um it's just one of those games that you are going to play and then put back in your shelf and never play again Unless yeah. and, and maybe they have a DLC plan. Maybe we're making assumptions that the Order eighteen eighty seven is a new game. Maybe the Order eighteen eighty seven or the conclusion of the story is going to be like standalone DLC. I don't have That'd any be idea. Fascinating because it does do the thing of like the you know post credit scene, their epilogue mm. chapter or whatever is like very Batman Arkham City yeah, Arkham Knight of him like standing up over the city and all hell's it's martial law and all this shit. And I'm like, oh fuck! Like I, for a second, I thought they were gonna let me play that, and I was like, this. Oh wait, no, they're not. You know what I mean? And then they didn't. And it's just like. <sighs> All right, like, what do I do with that? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like I, if it was, if there, if that's gonna be story DLC or whatever, then great. But if that was the case, they would have been saying that by now. Yeah, I think so too. When all this shit yeah, started all, getting yeah. kicked around, the game's five hours long. I'd be like, no, it's not. And guess what, motherfuckers? Two months from now, you're getting the story DLC that'll make it worth your while. Yeah, maybe. And I, I, you know, so that's what I'm saying. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't not recommend it because it's sixty dollars for a five or six or seven or eight hour game. I don't think that's really the problem itself. I think it's just not worth the purchase mm -hmm. if you're really only going to play it one time you can literally if you went out in an afternoon bought it you'd be done with it that day so it's like it seems to me that it's a game where you should pull with your friends or just wait for it to be a little cheaper and check it out that's what i would say i mean we always talk about voting with your wallets supporting developers and stuff wait till it's on sale for playstation plus or whatever and i would not put it past that in six seven months this game is free on playstation plus that, that they can say they're giving you a triple a game right. for free like i wouldn't put it past it but yeah i'm with you and like i, I you know like I finished it and I was like, that was a fun time, but I enjoyed getting the trophies and mining those. I enjoyed the characters, not even so much the story, right? Because I feel like it kind of unravels at the end. And then, yeah, this is totally a game that I feel like, great, like, you, you know, we, you talk about it all the time, right? That this was clearly supposed to be the, the winter game, the fall game, mm -hmm. the holiday game, right? When we are still closer to launch, you know what I mean? Like, because uh, Infamous Second Son is good. It's not amazing, mm -hmm. right? Like, but it's good. You got that. And you have all these games, these first party games that came out that aren't a hundred percent cooked but they're close you know what i mean that's how launches go and so the further we get away from launch the, the higher the expectation the bar goes after something like shadows of mordor or, you know all these other yeah games. i mean next up is bloodborne and we'll see how you know we'll see how that turns out because i i agree with you in the sense you know i'm conflicted on this that it's un it's i feel like it's somewhat unusual to have first party sony games not be definitively amazing. good yeah if not great or amazing i think that that's rare i can't even think of a game with the exception of when the ps4 you know started i'm not saying that they don't exist but i mean like on ps3 we had a lot of great games from the first party it's what kept the system alive and going but and ps4 games. but well, yeah but, but think about like resistance and motor storm and those kinds of games that launched with ps3 were good and and they and obviously those developers evolution and insomniac built on those on those games later but when you look at the first party games that are coming out for ps4 i do feel that they are undercooked even for launch games and like killzone is probably still the best first party exclusive i think on, on the system oh sure um and you know in the triple a space sure but knack was bad and infamous was good but we wanted more out of infamous and now we have the order and it, it's just like i i want to see more i yeah. need i need to see more from these guys and i know we're going to see more from naughty dog and i know the other guys have things cooking and they're gonna be great but it's just yeah the order 1886 it fell flat i'm really interested to see how people feel about this game yeah you know yeah, because yeah. um they're definitely going to be proponents of this game. Um, but someone said to me, so I don't know who said it or where it was said, but they're like, this is going to be like the Rise version, like Rise on Xbox One, mm -hmm. where it's a game that just came out. And right. maybe you get a sequel. It was and beautiful and people had fun with it, but they forgot it. It's popcorn. It's, yeah. it's out. It's done. So, you know, credit to Ready It's On for, for a good attempt and I think a, 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 a solid engine and a, and a nice foundation for what could be better in the future. Yeah. Um, but... It's okay, you know. Like I, 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 it's fine. It's disappointing because the crescendo. It started to crescendo a little bit every time we saw it. Where I'm like, maybe this is going to be yeah, really yeah, maybe good. Like when around. we saw, and I think that the airship level was a clever level to show because I think that is one of the best levels in the game, definitely. Yeah. Um, but it started to crescendo to a point where I'm like, maybe, maybe, maybe they're on to something with this yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. But they're on to they're something. They're on to something. Still. It's just not there. Yeah. yeah or 1886 not, wasn't it? But it was. It was. It was fine. We enjoyed ourselves for a little bit. It's forgettable. It came and went. Yeah, and I, I would say, you know, I, I think it's a game. Yeah, wait for it to go on sale. If you buy it now, if you want. Um, but I think it's a good idea if you have a PlayStation Four fan, you know, your roommate or your brother or sister, or a friend, you split the cost of it and just share it and then sell it back or whatever, or yeah. you know, keep it in one of your collections. I think that's a pretty legit way to go. I don't think, in other words, I don't think you're gonna feel ripped off if you do something like that. Okay. You might feel a little disappointed if you go out and spend sixty dollars on this game. Sure.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think of The Order 1886? Based on what we've seen, or if you're in the future, what you've played, let us know in the comments. And then make sure you keep coming back here to youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames each and every day for new Let's Plays, review discussions. We do Twitch stuff over there. Colin's here. You got Portilla. There's all sorts of cool stuff happening on Kinda Funny.